Well, a very, very good afternoon. This is um, our to discuss HRM. I would like to introduce my colleagues and myself first. My name is uh, Tim Nicholl. I'm a Pro Vice Chancellor at Liverpool John Moores University, and I have a particular responsibility for the, the Faculty of Business and Law. And my colleagues, Marina, would you like to introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. I'm going to welcome the world of the Karasis event, the Karasis Forum. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Marina Shmatova. Uh, like all this, uh, like all the speakers on this platform, I have a long track record, and if you find uh, an extended CV on my personal page on this platform, but on the, this panel that I represent the Mozambique Russia Development Corporation and the Scientist Council of the Financial University under the President of the Russian Federation, I will divide my special in my speech on the two parts. <laughs> It's okay. Can I? Can I? <laughs> That's great. Let, let's go to Shumo first, and then we'll come back to your uh, substantive presentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shumo, could you introduce mm -hmm. yourself? Hi, mm -hmm. it's Shumo Acharya. I'm the chairman and founder of Etran Solutions Limited. Uh, we are an India-based company, which is in the business of telematics, which is global positioning system and network video recorder, mm -hmm. and we create an integrated service to the customers. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been working, we've been, my, my company is now 20 year old and I am a reasonably old guy in Horasis. I've been attending it for the last five years. So I think that should be all. Over to you, Tim. That's great. Thank you very much. And uh, we hope to be joined by a number of other panelists, but they're busy having some difficulty dialing in. So they may well join us as we go through this discussion. But can I just say some words of context, first of all, for the discussion that we're about to have? So I think this session is really about the future of organizational HRM. Um, and before we go to the panel, let me set this, this discussion context. So in recent years, we've, we've seen very much a shift in corporate dialogue. And whereas organizations have previously defined their relationship with society through vision and mission statements, I think we're increasingly uh, looking at organizations and asking them to be much more explicit about their purpose. And purpose has a much broader societal context. And the idea of purpose is located very much within a broader stakeholder context and responds to narratives around climate change, uh, the eradication of poverty, excess profit taking, modern slavery, inclusion, uh, gender equality, diversity. And then we have the whole debate around the future of work, particularly um, in the face of technological developments. Many of these things are reflected, of course, in the UN Sustainability Goals. And I think what we've seen um, is that these are no longer issues just for political debate. As organizational leaders, we can't just say, well, these issues exist in the realm of the politician. We'll get on with, with making profits, etc. And this is partly because of the democratization of public debate through the widespread use of social media. This means essentially that we're challenged as individuals to examine our own lifestyles, our attitudes, our behaviors, our beliefs. And then in an organizational context, uh, we're being asked to redefine how we manage and how we lead to address the changing external environment. If I go to the pre-COVID days, uh, much of the discussion in the HRM context concerned generational expectations. Uh, there was much talk about skill shortages, about access to training and education in different parts of the world. And there was also shifts to working patterns we're on the expectation that there'd be significant impacts because of artificial intelligence and other technological developments. Interestingly, during the COVID crisis, these issues have been brought into focus. Um, we have particular jobs, concerns around job security, around job preservation. For those who are still employed, we have many home working. And this itself has brought many challenges from an HRM context, particularly in the issues around poverty, around issues of loneliness, issues of mental health and issues of well-being. And I think as the purpose of organizations change, we're therefore forced to question how HRM will change as conceptions of purpose, role and responsibilities change. And I hope that in this, this session, we're going to explore what some of those changes may be. So um, it gives me a really great pleasure to, to go across to um, our panel members. I wonder if I'm just going in order of the, the panels that are in of the the uh, panels are in my face. So, Shumo, you're directly across from me. Would you like to, to start first with your presentation? Then I'll come to Marina. Right. Uh, uh, thank you very much. 
Mm-hmm. I will tell you about the experience of the, of the working uh, uh, through the pandemic in, the, in Africa, in public-private partnerships, and about the global community of entrepreneurship. And the second, I will, formula, I will formulate my conclusion of the world and the work of the now, now <coughs> reality. So, uh, try Henny, no? Yeah? Yeah, it is not very clear. I don't know. I'm not hearing it very clearly. Is it very clear, Tim? I think, uh, Marina, if you could talk very slowly, that'd be very useful. There's quite a lot of interference. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. okay. At the beginning of this year, the two big invitations, two strong events come into my life. The first is the visit of the inauguration of the President of Mozambique with His Excellency Philippe Nguyen. And the second, the Just the Harasses Forum, which was supported to wear this prison. Together with the best representative of the Russian uh, entrepreneurs, we flew to Mozambique in January and immediately decided to set up the Mozambique Russian Development Corporation. Seen in the region is the huge, huge potential for the businesses, for the different businesses. And the, and, the, and the implementation many, many uh, innovation projects in the new region for us. And we were and we impressed by the sorry. I have I have me. You're, you're, you're becoming more fainter, I'm afraid. We are impressed by we are impressed by the opening the goodwill for the government and the business community, as well as we find of the uh, natural resources. We are the ones we register the company, and as soon as we receive the document, we will block it with a global global world pandemic, global world problem is pandemic. Together with the, with the businessmen of the different countries, different businesses will work, work together. And, and, and we started to work together. Their companies have already had offices provided to this platform for the, for the holding online conference. Entrepreneurs from Russia being also, is, also in quarantine prepared presentation for this for, for their product. And every Monday, a lot Monday, we show the represent, a, a, a representative to, to the various minister of possibility of possible technology from from different countries. The necessary to Mozambique of Africa in general. All the result the seven months we worked the seventh month of the of the official officially declared emergency. We are starting construction of the three plants and with participation of the world community. Companies from different countries are global investors. The first, the first Western second plant and four plants construction started with the city of Beira with the support of the, of, of the his Excellency David Simander is the mayor of the city. This is a clear example for the, of the world who work community during during the pandemic. And now, now I try to I try to make this. Uh, now it will move it to the to the second part of my speech. It is it is complete. <coughs> It is concluding of I company. Now it is the time for the develop new communication. It's the business community. There is, there is time for the first and flexible solution I will prime of the uh, at the at the future. A new new understanding of an uh, entire communication. For this for this construction to close and enterprises and they are they are ready to quickly um, to quickly they, 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 they self new new reality 
and and their and and their ability to quickly uh, to quickly adapt to transfer to the work from offline to online. And now I'm and now I'm particularly uh, interesting to um, to observe their change as, a, as a personally as my and my colleague. <laughs> So it it, it it connected is a bit. It is amazing. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Now I'm saying now I'm saying to the form and the minister and the minister of France personally personality to the opportunity to speak to this form. <laughs> it, 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 it's my experience. <laughs> sorry, because it's a big because it's, uh, my time is it's, it's really I, I know you hear me. M Marina, I think you, you, you're breaking up there a little bit. I wonder if we could perhaps go to Shumo and then we'll come back back to you if that's possible um, mm -hmm. to see if we can get a better connection. But thank you very much for that. I think we, we got the gist of what you said both in the first part and the second part. Mm -hmm. Shumo, could I come back to you and then we can perhaps bring, bring some of these issues back in. Right. Uh, we are in a very, very interesting uh, global situation. Uh -huh. You know, if you go back uh, prior to the Industrial Revolution, you probably had the soldiers, the uh, sailors and traders, global traders. They are the only people who used to move around. Rest all community really used to work out of home. Suddenly, the new pandemic has changed the scenario for our... Because, you know, after the Industrial Revolution, when the manufacturing started, the entire group working scenario started and created all the different terms of management, including human relationship. Today, human relationship, which has developed over the last hundreds of years, suddenly is facing a complete new challenge. The workplace is changed. The whole world today is working out of home. And when I look at post-COVID in a year or two, it is not going to go back to the old way of working anymore. We will probably get a hybrid system where people used to work from home as also from office. There will be a complete uh, change in the workplace designing. Workplace will no longer be hierarchical and position-based. It will be more activity-based. People will come in together because there is, a, there is always a need of that human touch. So people would come in together where they will do brainstorming, they will do group activities, prototyping, or else as much as possible, people will probably work out of home, even after COVID, because this is something which is an interesting alternate which has come up and has come up very, very productively. And the new organizational system needs a completely different kind of a leadership. The leadership has a big, huge challenge. There is a whole lot of corporate compassion which is required. The order of the day tomorrow will be the partnership between people, people, purpose, and profit probably has to take temporarily a bit of a backseat. It's more the relationship with the new, new worker management relationship, the compassion of relationship, because there would be a huge challenge because suddenly people are realizing, as, as we can see, that digitization has taken a five-year leap, that many things can be done much, much cheaper than before and produce a similar result. But that has also a negative societal challenge. Hence, the entire corporate management has to take a very, very different view, a relationship, a transparent relationship with people working in the organization is becoming going to become the top priority tomorrow. And it is important for the entire management system of the world to ensure we work together to retain as much 
people as possible in the organization, retrain them, create, allow them all kind of facility and infrastructure to be able to work effectively. Because this work from home is really made a change in that environment. Earlier it used to be only in the IT industry, now it's become prevalent in all industries. So we do see tomorrow's world transparent, compassionate, human relationship is going to be the order of the day. Thanks, Tim. Over to you. Thank you very much. There's very many strands coming out of that. And Marina picked up some of those. The essential thing is around the potential for change. Um, and I just want to pick up that home working, first of all. And it, it has two aspects, obviously. It has an organizational aspect of how we deal with uh, having the workforce away from the workplace at home. But also it's about the employees sitting at home in a very different set of circumstances. Now, I wondered, could I just pick up on that hybrid point, first of all, the, the idea of working in two locations, focusing it very much from the employee's point of view, because issues around loneliness, issues around um, lack of social interaction, issues around feeling perhaps confined to a, a space you don't want to be, are things that are coming out in the reports. And it's about how do you successfully manage that situation and maintain the sort of well-being and, and good health of the employee, even though it might be advantageous from the employer not to have so many people who's traveling into a, a very large office building, etc. And Shuma, could I come to you first? And then Marina, if I could ask you to reflect on that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a question for me, yeah. Sorry. Um, Shuma, could, perhaps Shuma, if you could pick up on that point of, of that yeah. hybrid. See, what happens is our experiences in the last six months have been very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we did find there is a need from people to be in the collective environment. Even, if, even when we wanted to push people back to work out of home, there has been people coming back to the office. Mm -hmm. So, And that's, that, that's a challenge because it, it's that human touch which is very important. Touch with others, touch with the entire environment. So it's important that we, uh, what, what we've done in our company very clearly, we've, we've got into a roster. We ensure that every guy comes a day or two in the office a week. The rest of the time he works out of home. And there is a very, very clear communication with them. Communication has become the most critical thing in this kind of a scenario. All the people who are working out of home, we ensure that they are connected on a group basis at least twice a week and that that's where the you know the the, the part part otherwise there is a there's a very strong force of getting them so seg segregated from the whole environment and we've been so far very successful productivity management has been the easiest thing to do it's come up very well but relationship management has been a challenge and I think this calls for a tremendous effort from the HR and top management to ensure the people are always intact together and part of the whole system. Okay, thank you. And, and Marina, could I just ask, you have been um, in Mozambique and you've been under lockdown, but you obviously have connections with your home university in Moscow. And have you, has your personal experience of being in lockdown um, led to certain reflections about how we might manage relationships in the future with, with sort of distant uh, forms of working. <laughs> yes, uh, it, I, I work very quickly, very close with, with my university. And, and, and uh, tomorrow we have a big uh, event too, something like uh, a crisis forum. And uh, together we talk about how we can, how we can do, how we can, um, how how we can work together with the with the soul with the South African community because to help us to start construction our first plan our, our first plan and the, and the, and the, our um, partners from from university help us to find new new technology and we and we uh, bring this technology on technology online for our project here because all, all our work is on, on online. Okay. It's it, it really, it really great because, because it's, now it's complicated, complicated to work between online and offline. 
it, 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 you but 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 it's but it's not it's not working in, in this way. Okay. Uh, yes. That's it. So very much communication is very important. So could I could I pick up the other aspect of that from the employee's point of view and, and pick up some of the points you mentioned about the, the transformation and leadership attitudes and behaviors? And I just wonder if you could expand a little bit on those themes that you were developing. So as leaders, how are we now to, to approach the management of uh, people who are working with us and working for us? You mentioned about hierarchies, for example. You mentioned about, and that implies power distances, et cetera. But could you expand a little bit on, on those managerial attitudes that you're, you're suggesting might need to change? Uh, so, 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 repeat, 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 Okay, okay. Perhaps, let me come back. Could I have asked Shumo perhaps to pick up that point around leadership and we'll come back, yeah? See, in today, the leading and managing team will undergo a permanent shift. Mm -hmm. The rules of engagement that have been taught and mastered over so many years and disrupted, stand disrupted with leaders having to manage teams that are virtual hybrid. Managing mm -hmm. teams are virtual hybrid needs a different kind of competence altogether. It's making people unlearn and learn new rules of engagement. While empathy and EQ have been spoken about as a critical ingredient that leaders need to ha have over the last few decades, this becomes more pronounced now when we are not able to see and interact with your team in person. Human centricity and empathy will be central to all we do. And we'll cut across all actions that leaders do in the emerging, uh, in engaging with the teams. As I was telling earlier, we must practice corporate passion as now is the time when people, purpose and partnership come before profit. In these interesting times, employees and prospective candidates will judge organizations by the way in which they, treat, they have treated their employees during this pandemic period. Organizations must communicate, which I was telling earlier, openly and take care of their people. The people first approach is what will define the future workplaces and organizations. Okay, and that there's elements of the people first. That's around their well-being, it's around their rewards, or uh, what kind of elements would you, you would say would signify a, a company that is putting people first and would be best practice, if you like? Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if you really look at it, uh, you know, generally, we've been talking about stakeholder interest. Yes. Yeah. And in the stakeholder interest, you have many a times the shareholders' interest or the investors' interest gets prominence. In tomorrow's world, for quite some time, it is a people interest will, which should become prominent. Because you know what happens today is suddenly you find that same productivity can be delivered with lower number of people. Mm -hmm. You can your your traveling cost goes down substantially. There is a, there is a there is a pressure. If you see the stock market, stock market is doing pretty well because they know that there is a chance of savings of cost. We can, like, you know, we, 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 we took a very clear oath. Time is bad, but we will not let go any employee during that COVID period. We will ensure that we retain every employee, maintain the same HR policies, same way we are paying their salaries, same date we are paying their salaries for the entire period. We don't know how, uh, whether we'll be able to do it. How long will COVID be there? Yeah. But this is something which very, very, you know, people, employees might much see. There are many employees see that, you know, they feel they can be disposed of. But it is the last thing a corporation should do in today's environment. In today's environment globally, you need to ensure that your employees are protected. Yes. Yeah. I, an observation of the, 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 the crisis has been perhaps the, um, the quicker movement 
towards the redundancy of certain activities Absolutely. and an emphasis about certain others. And normally economies have a period of time to create structural change, but actually the COVID has, has required us to face up to those changes in a much quicker time frame than otherwise would be the case. And therefore government interventions around the world have been supportive. But it's very hard looking over the next six months to see ways in which we'll not up ultimately have to face that issue of significant structural differences. Nice to see you again, Marina. It's great. And it's um sorry. it strikes me this sorry, is a, I, I, I very good. We can we can see you again, which is good. It's, uh, yeah, just good. the structural changes that are taking place because of COVID in uh, the nature of jobs, and um, mm -hmm. and particularly the ability to use technology. If I look at my own business, the university business, we probably jumped ahead by three five years in a period of three mm -hmm. months, um, and we're not quite sure of what the consequences are. But it strikes me that there are that compassion and humanitarian view you're, you're taking very much is, is something that organizations may have to uh, embrace in order to help that structural movement, which we're going to see. Uh, otherwise, we could have significant unemployment in certain, um, in certain sort of societies. And I, I just wondered, Marina, you, you would, the project was very much around collaboration. And I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about that collaboration, which may suggest that the boundaries of organizations may change in order to promote the changing world. Uh, yes, no, no, um, because now I, I'm both here and all the businessmen are the world both with me and we, we make new collaboration around the world and uh, today there, um, our company uh, work, with, work with different, different, different uh, corporations around the world. It, it's a, a, uh, it's in mobile, it's in total, it's the Russian, it's in our company, the university, and 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 to, today, I don't know how how I can how can how how I can explain this business, but it's new for me <laughs> because because it's a it, it, it's a lo, it's a local material it's a local material from other things, but because it's a different engineers, it's a different uh, 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 yeah. Different managers here, and and we and and we make a new, new a new construction factory. It's new, it, 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 I don't know how 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 can you explain this. Okay, okay. Uh, that's it's very useful. I just can I just pick up on a separate point, and this is about the um, it's about the water cooler point about sort of um, the workplace, and it's often the the issue that. Um, the informal social owned interaction is often a source of innovation and creativity within organizations. And it's right. the conversations you have in the corridor, it's the conversations you have in going to lunch with someone. And it's not the formal meetings, it's not the hierarchical structures. And actually the way leadership has been developed has been very much about leadership at different levels within organizations and creativity within different levels. And I wonder to what extent do you feel that the, the, the focus on very on homeworking means that we have to to be more deliberate about the circumstances in which we can create that space for innovation and creativity when people do come together. Mm -hmm. See, it's this has been one of the biggest casualty uh, in in the entire shift to work from home. The biggest casualty is the collaborative spirit in an organization, which is not comes out more off work interactions. What we've been doing, you know, uh, uh, today uh, what's really happened is the, uh, the video conferencing has suddenly improved substantially. And in that video conferencing, you also have facilities of group, small group, separate uh, kind of uh, informal chat group. Now, we have started using that. We have started uh, asking people that get together in that informal chat, have a chat the way you used to do it in the lunch or dinner. Because otherwise, it's, it is something which is, you know, that human touch is, is suddenly becoming uh, past. It's, it's no more there. And it's important to bring it in and bring it in even structurally. You know, we, we, we do trying people to different groups, make sure that they do interact once or twice a week. A very conscious effort from the HR 
to make sure that this is not become uh, it doesn't become a permanent casualty because many a innovation many a new things always come out of this group discussions yeah and it's it strikes me as a very very important feature of management now that we need to understand how to bring people together in a very different way absolutely and, absolutely you know, understand that the potential of the um but also the limitations perhaps of the technology that is there yeah yeah but you know but what's really happening another thing in your i am associated with uh, one of the management institutes in in my city and i find one big challenge in your uh, in, in, in the education uh, uh, industry suddenly the teachers who were earlier teaching in a classroom are exposed to the world because when you are taking an online class is being seen by everyone and and your your way of teaching is just not limited to your classroom of 20 guys yeah it's now uh, open to the parents the friends and everybody is looking at you and the preparation for doing it and you know there's a whole lot of change which needs to be done uh, in 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 the teaching environment and you know i, I in, in the institute where i am associated we've started this uh, parent uh, discussions on the on zoom platform okay and we were taking getting the parents in in the zoom getting their feedback and uh, uh, you know uh, doing it on a regular basis that's really done a lot of good thing you know th there is a lot of involvement of uh, the stakeholders in the educational process yeah it's a, a, a perhaps it links to that idea of communication that there's a there's a, an opportunity of being much more transparent and more open if you take this into uh, organizational structures the way in which people can interact at meetings the the number of people you can involve in meetings the way in which you can communicate perhaps directly in ways you haven't done using technology may offer a, a chance to to create a change in culture a change in values which hasn't been possible before in more uh, more static um, non virtual structures it's it's an interesting thought it's, uh, yeah it is it is it's it, it's really been useful it's becoming very very useful yeah. especially actually in the in in, in pre covid i probably used to talk to all my employees twice a year all my employees yeah now i'm i'm talking to them at least once a month if not more no. because suddenly the the technology has become so uh, uh, useful and the, my attitudes have also changed the importance of the this communication has become much much more important because of work from home culture and this also is it, it there are a lot of pluses in that people are becoming much more you know uh, the, the transparency is helping people bonding much more and have you found that that openness has um has created a different relationship between the employees and the company itself do they do they look upon the company in a different way because they have a greater sense of identity i based upon the knowledge that they've acquired i i we, we we found in our company i'm telling you by my own, my, my yes. own experience there is a whole lot of improved bondage between the employees and the company yes now all our you know like like our decision that we will not let go any person has been appreciated hugely and there are some people who have just gone because they, you know in, in in india there are some people who have gone into the villages and they've not come back yeah similar situation has happened but otherwise this kind of bonding and a total uh, transparent process sharing with them the ups and downs the profits the losses the challenges which is which is, which was not there earlier so much we are also you know pressed to do that with our employees and employees also appreciate themselves they they themselves offered a uh, uh, reduction in salary for a period of time we didn't do it but that's come from them because of the transparent communication yeah yeah and has it has it impacted upon your attitude towards the sort of more formal policies you have in hrm terms um have you seen that there are certain gaps in in your provision or certain certain areas that need to be adjusted yeah 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 there have been a lot of lot of adjustments which has been done in our policies hmm. see what is also happened if you really look at it um, there's to be a whole lot of touring in our companies now suddenly touring is become not it's not that it's not being done suddenly we realize that it's redundant 
Yeah. Technology is helping us so much in managing people and their processes and work uh, that and that demands certain changes in entire human uh, HR uh, processes and HR rules and regulations, which are being done as it goes off. Interesting. And can I ask for, you know, for the next generation, if we pick up the points that have been made, I'm sorry, all our panelists can't be here, but the points that have been made about the, the changing attitudes of leaders and managers. If I go then to the, the very start of the supply chain, if you like, the training and management of, of individuals who wish to take on a role within companies, do we have to therefore look at the way in which um, we, we train people to come into organizations, the way in which we need to create expectations about relationships within organizations, and the kind of roles and responsibilities people will take, moving away from a, an employer-employee type of relationship, which is, is represented by legal relations, into something that is much more emotionally based, that is much, um, it's more, much more sensitive to the needs of people as individuals. Well, I, 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 how it will finally come up, it's anybody's guess. Yeah. There is a challenge, there is a change the relationship profile relationship matrix between the management and the employees are going through a complete uh, transformation uh, people are much more accessible people are much more you know the distant people in the hierarchy you know as as we say this has been of course happening for quite some time the old pyramid structure in the organization is is, is, is giving away to a kind of an Eiffel structure, Eiffel Tower structure. Hmm. The middle management is suddenly moving off, and a direct communication with the lower management is working much smoother, much better. That is actually that is more for technology adoption, but COVID has moved it very fast. COVID has ensured that we jump on digitization by about five years. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 but it could have happened. Otherwise, it could have happened. That was something which was happening. The use of technology, use of video conferences, use of AI and everything else is, is, is really seeing a whole lot of change in the last six months. And do you also think that the, the changes are a reflection of the, the millennial and the Generation X changes so that we've become used to in organizations understanding that different generations have different needs, they're motivated by different factors. And um, I know I've sat in a number of panels at different harasses meetings where we've talked about having differential HRM policies in terms of reward recognition, uh, retention. And because the, the, the differences between the generations have been perhaps significant, and what may work for a certain group of people within an organization simply don't work for another. Have you, have you experienced any of that at all? This is, this is very, very clearly visible. Our generational approach to rewards and uh, you know, motivation and the current generations is so much different. You know, we, you, you can see uh, people in today's uh, uh, workforce, they look for much more challenges, much more, they, they, they are very, very eager to learn. You know, they, they will stay back in your organization if they see they're an opportunity to add value to themselves, which is an, and they look more uh, of a reward in that area than some uh, salary increase or some uh, bonus. Hmm. Because they know that as they add value, the future of theirs is brighter and brighter. This understanding in today's uh, generation is much, much more than in our generation. Yeah. And if I pick up just, I'm unconscious of the time, if I just pick up on those issues at the very start, and I'm sorry, as, as our only panelist, I, I'm directing yeah, yeah. questions towards you, but this is a really very interesting conversation. I, I'm just uh, struck, you know, we, uh, in the university sector, we're very conscious of those external discussions, particularly around the UN Sustainable Goals, the issues underpinning that, the issues of climate change, the issues of, of fairness, of diversity, of uh, inclusivity. And I just wanted to watch what extent those issues are coming to you as a leader um, from your workforce as, as part of the debate that they're having about the purpose of the company, about the way in which they operate, the relationships they have, not just with yourself, but also with people who are supplying the company, your customers, etc. 
a stakeholder relationship is of prime importance in the organization today. Everyone is looking at it, how, how we are dealing with the entire stakeholders. We have an advantage in, in case of uh, the gender issue or other the climate issue. We are quite advanced as a company. So we, we, we have our entire group into it. And, uh, you know, uh, there, there is, even, even in this kind of thing, there is a transformation which is taking place steadily. Because, you know, what happens is people working more from home has certain negative aspects in their family relationship. Hmm. And that's where we are being drawn in many times. And our HR is working very well in that area. Because, you know, that people are not used to be at home for so many hours. They don't like to be at home, sitting at home and working. But the, the demand of the day is for them to go and work there. We don't want them to come. Many, many places, we don't want them to come because, uh, you know, in, in a country like India, there are people on a public transport. We don't want people to travel in public transport for their safety and for the safety of the others. So there is a pressure on them to be sitting at home and working. Yeah. But there is that also has a their, their family pitfalls. Today, these are coming into the company do, HR domain. HR has really been moved to not only working on the relationship with employees, but a step forward on employees' own family relationship. This is a new aspect which has come because of COVID and has taken an important place in the organizational systems. Mm. And that requires a very different response from an HRM department and very different skill sets sometimes. Absolutely different kind of a response. Very, very compassion uh, is required, understanding the other side. You just can't do it like it, it can't go on a uh, rules and regulation based, much more EQ and feeling based. You got to sensitize your HR people properly so that they are in understand that additional responsibility. Yes, yes. That's quite something. Now, I'm conscious we've got two minutes left. I, I just wanted a very, very quick question. And this is the, the working from home may be a short term measure, but I get the sense that this is now a structural change that's taking place in the workplace. But the issue of digital poverty is raised and, um, and also the infrastructure around connectivity. And we, we are suffering from this conference from, from some of these connectivity issues. But it's just, it strikes me that this is, a, this is quite an issue that has to be tackled by organizations if they're to make um, this transition successful. It has to. We, we, we all have to work, ensure that we provide the infrastructure to our employees so that their, their connectivity is the absolute number one priority in, the, in any organization, any country today. And there is a whole lot of challenge on the service providers in that area. And, uh, but I must say that uh, uh, even in India, where we don't expect us to be so good, but we, we, we're doing very well because uh, I'm connecting with my people on a regular basis yeah. and it works, it's working pretty well, pretty well. Yeah. And it's very satisfying, you know, that things are working. We are not, we are much better than the Horace's conference. <laughs> Well, look, can I, I'm conscious we've got a minute left. Can I thank you very much as the only surviving member of the panel? Uh, it's been a fascinating conversation. Angela as well, could I thank you very much for staying with us during this session? Um, I'm sorry the other, the, the other four speakers weren't able to join us, but um, I really look forward to meeting you at, um, at other physical we'll, we'll conferences. We'll definitely meet each other. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Okay, you take bye. Care. Bye. Take bye, bye. Care. bye. Thank you very much.